the Arthrex Femoral Opening Wedge Osteotomy Surgical Technique. Preoperative evaluation, including standard 3-foot AP radiographs, Rosenberg, and patella views are necessary to determine the amount of correction for the valgus-aligned leg. The degree of correction is calculated to restore normal physiological alignment. With the patient in a supine position, a 4 to 6 centimeter incision is made over the distal lateral aspect of the thigh. The iliotibial band is split longitudinally and further blunt dissection is carried out to expose the lateral metaphyseal and diaphyseal flare of the lateral femur. The Arthrex quadriceps tendon retractor is used to protect the vastus lateralis and thigh musculature throughout the procedure. An additional retractor is placed posterior to the femur to protect the neurovascular supply. Under fluoroscopic assistance, a 3 mm transverse pin is placed parallel to the joint surface while being directed medially to the origin of the medial collateral ligament. Once the pin contacts the medial cortex, the drill is removed. At this time, the osteotomy guide is assembled. It is positioned opposite to the tibial technique and secured to the pin until the laser line is flush with the back of the guide. The parallel sleeve assembly is adjusted so that the 2 mm osteotomy cutting pins are positioned superior to the patellofemoral joint. The osteotomy guide pins are drilled parallel to the joint surface until they intersect the transverse pin one centimeter from the medial cortex. The guide is removed, followed by the transverse pin. The osteotomy cutting guide is placed over the guide pins. Once secure, the breakaway pins are shortened and a sagittal saw is used to perforate the femoral cortex superior to the guide pins. Osteotomes in a variety of sizes are used to complete the cut under fluoroscopic control. The depth markings on the osteotome blades may be referenced to the breakaway pins during this portion of the procedure. The osteotomy is made until a cortical hinge of bone is left medially. Once the osteotomy is complete, the breakaway pins are removed. The tines of the wedge are assembled as shown. Once assembled, the tips of the tines are inserted into the osteotomy. With controlled use of a mallet, the wedge is driven into the osteotomy until the degree of opening desired is achieved. The markings on the wedge tines are used as a reference to the degree of opening achieved. Care is taken to allow the medial cortex to undergo plastic deformation during the correction. With the use of the leg alignment rod, the degree of correction is confirmed prior to removing the handle from the wedge tines. A specifically pre-cut cancellous allograft bone wedge can then be inserted between the wedge tines. The femoral opening wedge osteotomy plate is then placed over the cancellous bone graft. The plate is specially designed for the procedure to provide secure fixation and stability of the osteotomy during the healing phase. The plate may be slightly bent to conform to the metaphyseal region of the femur. The use of the opening wedge tibial plates may be necessary in situations where the femur is quite small. The plate is positioned in between the wedge tines. The spacer is placed securely into the opening created until the plate is flush to the lateral cortex. Prior to screw fixation, the final leg alignment is confirmed. Up to three 6.5 mm partially threaded cancella screws are placed in the plate distal to the osteotomy. Four 4.5 mm fully threaded bicortical screws are used to secure the plate proximal to the osteotomy. Once the plate is secure, cortical cancellous allograft bone wedges available in pre-cut 17.5 mm widths 
are an alternative to autogenous tricortical bone graft harvested from the iliac crest. The graft is used to further fill the defect. The final x-ray confirms a re-established normal mechanical axis of the leg with the opening created by this technique filled with bone graft. Postoperatively, the knee is immobilized with a range of motion brace in full extension that allows for full range of motion when unlocked. Passive flexion extension in a continuous passive motion device, quadricep sets, and straight leg raising may be started the day after surgery. Non-weight-bearing crutch walking is recommended for a period of four weeks, followed by partial weight-bearing until the eight to nine week mark. Full weight-bearing is normally possible after eight to nine weeks when radiographs show satisfactory healing occurring.